Welcome to Career Talks with Sri. My name is Sri Vidya Santosh and I provide unbiased career guidance on higher education, premium institutes, entrance examinations, etc. You're watching Career Guidance Q&A Part 6, wherein I answer your queries regarding higher education. Let's get on to the first question. Priyanka is asking about biomedical engineering. Biomedical engineering is about applying technology in the field of medicine. You've heard about pacemakers, right? Whenever there is a problem in the heart, you would have heard that, okay, they went to a hospital and a pacemaker was implanted. What is that? When a human body part is getting defective, we are implanting an artificial system inside the human body. So do you think that you can implant anything and just keep inside the human body? No, there should be specific materials, right? Because it is acting inside the human body and it can create problems. Now, who in the world finds out such things? Who is working behind it? Those people are biomedical engineers. But please don't confine your thought thinking that um, it's only related to implanting of such systems. No, it is also about finding new devices which can be helpful in the field of medicine. When you complete your biomedical program, you can also get employed in the field of sales and marketing too. Service, I mean after sales, that is also a field that biomedical engineers get into. After completing your grade 12, you have courses like BSc Biomedical and also BTech Biomedical Engineering. In premium institutes like IIT, you have programs in BTech Biomedical Engineering. So if you are focused in getting into that field, please try to get a seat in IITs. And if you're asking me about the salaries, because that is one question that Priyanka has asked me, I can never say that like everybody who completes biomedical engineering is going to get this amount of a salary. No, it is not like that. It all depends on your aptitude, skill sets, and like how well you can convince your employer that you are going to be an asset to that company. Good luck, Priyanka. Rhea Biju is planning to be an IFS officer. So her question is, after 12th, uh, which course should she take? And specifically in brackets, she has written science field as a second option. Rhea Biju, I am a little confused about the question that you have asked because IFS, I can either read it as Indian Forest Service or Indian Foreign Service. So I don't know which is the course that you are planning to take. So may I request all the people who are putting comments to please Mention the course in detail rather than putting it in abbreviations. Now, if your plan is to get into Indian Forest Service, you should mandatorily take up a science program. Because for graduation, there are certain specific courses that they ask for, like veterinary, agriculture, forestry, geology, botany, zoology, physics, chemistry, etc. etc. But all these things are related to science field. So if that is the case, you should take up 11th and 12th science stream and then further proceed into any of these programs, including engineering for your graduation. Now, if the plan is to get into Indian Foreign Service IFS, if that is the plan, then uh, any degree is going to be fine for you. It is not mandatory that you should take up science. In that case, if your question is what should be your plan B, that too in the field of science, I would say, Rhea, that totally depends on your skill sets, which I don't know because I only know about you from the comment that you have given, right? How can I tell you that this particular course is going to be useful for you until and unless I know your skill sets and passion? So I can't give one generic answer for it. Uh, basically, if it is Indian Forest Service, go ahead with a science degree. And if it is Indian Foreign Service, any degree is going to be fine. But planning for your plan B should always depend on your skill sets and passion. Serena is currently in grade 12 and is preparing for IP MAD exam and GIP MAD exam. So if she does not get through in IIMs by writing this exam, should she drop one year or go for another course? And is also asking me suggestions about joining for other programs. As you all know, IPMAT and TRIPMAT are examinations for getting into IIMs integrated programs right after grade 12. Nowadays, there are a lot of children who are preparing for these exams and the number of seats are very less. 
Uh, more and more IIMs are getting into integrated programs right after 12th. So I think very soon NTA would take up this examination and will conduct one single exam for joining all IIMs. As of now, each of the IIMs are conducting separate entrance examinations. However, if you're not able to get into an integrated program right after 12th, you don't have to lose hope. You can always do graduation from any other college and then try for an MBA program in IIM. In those cases, obviously, you have to write certain entrance examinations after graduation, so you have to start preparing for that too. Now, joining uh, some other courses totally depends on your skill set, Serena, which I will not be able to say generically. And also, Serena is asking whether she should drop one year and prepare for IIM programs. And that will also totally depend on your skill sets, my dear. Good luck. Fabis has just completed grade 12 and is planning to get into IT field. So the confusion is whether he should take BSc Computer Science or BCA or BTech. The difference between these courses, that is the confusion. BSc Computer Science is more concept oriented, wherein BCA is more of application oriented. People normally say that the latest technology and things are more taught in BCA than BSc Computer Science programs. However, I would advise you to check the syllabus of the university before pursuing further. Each of the universities has got different syllabuses for all these programs. So check the syllabus and understand what is going to be better for you when you get into the career. Moreover, BTEC Computer Science is always like just one year extra compared to the BSc Computer Science program and BCA program, wherein these two programs are three years and BTEC program is four years. But if you study a BTEC program, four year program, as you all know, you are going to get a professional degree. So if you have time, I would always advise you to go for a professional degree program rather than a general program. Fatima Safa is asking about paramedical courses other than BSc Nursing. She's asking how can she get government seats, I mean merit seats in these colleges and the admission procedure. Fatima, uh, even though we call these courses paramedical courses, please understand that these courses fall under the Allied Health Science category. There are a lot of courses like the radiology, physiotherapy, virology, diabetology, perfusion technology, cardiovascular technology and a lot more. But I cannot give one single answer to your question because it's not a generic answer. Each of the state has got their own different entrance examinations or eligibility criteria for getting government seats. Some of these states in India conduct a separate entrance examination, where in some states they calculate the 12th grade marks and accordingly give admissions. And some of these states have announced that they will look into the NEET score for giving a rank for admissions to these sector, um, I mean medical sector courses. So it all depends on the eligibility criteria which is set forth by the state. So please have a look into it. However, most of the states does not conduct a separate entrance examination. It is purely dependent on the marks that you score for your grade 12 or for the NEET. Next question is from Aishat Lutfa Naja. She is asking whether there are any opportunities for research after nutrition and dietetics. Of course, there are a lot of research opportunities in this field. And the second question is, is it true that the scope for this course is not much in India? I would say that's not true. Nowadays, the scope for this course is getting more and more because uh, a lot of people are now into a uh, health conscious diet as well as a healthy lifestyle and things like that. So there is obviously more of scope compared to the previous years. Uh, and her last question is, if I do this course in India, uh, will I be able to work abroad or should I complete some other course in another country? Uh, I should. Since this course falls under the medical category, as you know, uh, if you're planning to work in a foreign country, you will have to write their license examination. Even if you complete the course from India, without getting a license from that country, you will not be able to practice there. Now, the exams in different countries are not the same. For example, if you're planning to come to UAE, uh, UAE will have a different uh, exam. I mean, a licensing exam if you are planning to get posted as a nutritionist or a dietitian. And if the plan is to go to UK, the exam would be different. I mean the licensing exam. However, you have to get the license from that country to practice there. Mm -hmm. 
Neha Nasir. Ma'am, can you explain about BA Honours in Psychology with Human Resource Management? I'm planning to do the course in UA. Neha, uh, while you do a BA Honours in Psychology, you can specialize in Human Resource Management. The benefit or the advantage of taking Human Resource Management along with Psychology is that if you are planning to get into the Human Resource Department of an MNC, that will be helpful for you. Mostly people do any graduation and then they go for an MBA with specialization in HR. So the only place where they specialize in HR would be MBA, right? And that too, as you all know, the specialization subject is something that we learn in the third and the fourth semester. But if you have learned human resource management right from the start of your graduation, that gives you an added advantage when you start applying for your job. So if your plan is to get into the human resource departments, then that is a right choice. Noel Emmanuel, ma'am, BBA general versus BBA specialization. And is it better to do BBA general and do specialization in MBA? Please make a video on that. Noel Emmanuel, see, it is okay to do a generic BBA and then specialize in MBA. Nowadays, there are a lot of colleges and universities which provide specialization programs right at BBA level. It is not mandatory that you should specialize in BBA level itself. Most of the times, children will not be aware about the opportunities because whatever they have heard and learned until their grade 12, that is their level of knowledge, right? So with that, they will go to a college and obviously they are there for giving admission. So they will try to convince you to some specialization programs and tell you that this is going to be great. But I would say that is not mandatory because once you do your graduation, you will have a better idea and that will help you to take some specialization in MBA programs and taking in a specialization in MBA is fine. But if you are very clear on the field that you are planning to take, for example, if you are saying that um, I want to get into sports management, that is the area where I want to work. And if some college is offering you a BBA in sports management and further MBA in sports management, okay, fine, shall go, that's fine. But it's not mandatory, my dear. My advice is go for a generic BBA and do as much as certification courses, online courses, so that you get ideas on various fields and understand what would be your right area and do that as specialization while you do your MBA program. We are coming to an end of Career Gardens Q&A part 6. I know that you have a lot of queries. So whatever your confusions are, please post us comments below this video so that I can pick those questions and answer that in the upcoming videos. See you.